Hi, I'm Michael Clark, and welcome to the road trip. And as you can see, we've got a pretty big customer sitting here in the Blue Ocean studio, and that's the 2013 Ford F-250 Super Duty. Now, the changes may seem minimal to the untrained eye, but the thing that we wanted to have this truck here for today is not so much about the changes and what's new. It has to do with what these trucks are being used for in a much more popular sense, and that's getting a three-quarter ton truck for the purposes of using a fifth wheel. Now, we brought along our friends from Bell's Hitches and Hittingly, and they're going to tell us what we need to know about some of the new technology. It's not as rough and tough as it used to be in respect to getting these things to hook up. In fact, it's getting to the point where something like this makes a lot more sense for using it for things such as toy haulers, hauling around your quads and snowmobiles. So we're going to tell you what you need to know about that, as well the question of whether or not you need to go to gas or diesel on a truck like this. This particular one behind us is equipped with a 6.2 liter gas engine. Now it's about half the torque expectation as to what you could get if you were going to a power stroke diesel, but it all comes down to the big question, how much truck do you need? So we're going to share those numbers with you today. And if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about anything automotive, send us an email at honkyourhorn at live.ca. And remember, to listen to the road trip on CJOB every Saturday from 10 a.m. till 12 noon. Let's hit the road with the Super Duty Ford. Now, when I say 6.2 liter V8 under the hood of a Ford truck, you're probably thinking along the lines of the Harley Davidson versions, possibly the Raptor. But we're dealing with the F 250 version, and that means that we've got 385 horsepower and 405 foot pounds of torque. Now, that torque is happening about 4,500 RPM. And it's important to remember that the 800 foot pounds of torque with the Power Stroke 6.7 is happening a lot lower. But remember, that's for applications that really need to have that type of tug. And you have to remember there's some definite advantages to using a gas engine. For example, they don't have the same problems that occur with letting that vehicle sit in between uses. And for the application that this particular customer is using this F-250 for, it's going to make a lot more sense to have the gas engine. Now, whether you go gas or diesel with the F-250 Super Duty, you're getting the torque shift six-speed automatic. And that has the abilities to shift manually and an interesting place to put that manual shifter, of course, and that is on the column shift. Now things have come a long way since the days of the West Coast mirrors and the type that you used to strap onto the fenders of the Parisian. You've actually got a lot more power options that exist on both half ton as well as three quarter ton trucks like the F-250 Super Duty. Now what we like about these particular ones is that they can fold up nice and flush. So if you're going to be using this vehicle, putting it into a garage, you can make sure that you get them out of the way. Now all you have to do is simply flip the switch on the inside brings the mirrors out completely but that's not where the power actuation stops these particular units actually allow you to move the mirrors in and out as required to make sure that you've got the right view depending on the trailer that you're towing what I also like here is that there's very easy to view repeaters that are mounted on the mirrors important of course to make sure that people know where you're going especially important if you've got a very large trailer on the back but what I also like about these mirrors is that they have the convex lower viewing panes so that you're able to get a wide angle view. Now that's important when you're going to be backing the trailer up. Now there is of course a backup camera which helps to a degree especially when you're going to be hooking up the vehicle to the trailer but let's face it when it comes down to actually moving it you're going to have to rely on these mirrors in a big way and they're one of our favorites when it comes to the three-quarter ton set. Now, a lot of people are considering the three-quarter ton solution when it comes to trucks because they're just that much more capable. But to make them really capable, you've got to go to the experts. And that's why we brought along Jack Bell from Bell's Hitches. And you guys have been hooking people up since 1917. Yeah, it's a family-owned and operated business. And uh, we've been in the same location since 1917, third building. 
and uh, me and my brother the the probably the fifth generation. Well, that's a great success story for in and around Winnipeg. But what I'm curious about is the move to these new type of fifth wheel hitches. Is it anywhere near as cumbersome as it used to be to get something like this put into your truck and hook it up? No, I mean they, they've come a long way since since years ago. Um, they have anti-vibration systems built into them. Uh, they they come out of the bed a lot easier so you can have a clean bed and you use your truck for your everyday use. They've, they've really come a long way and there's some nice features to them now that they didn't have a few years back. Well, I'm thinking about the ones that I've experienced a few years back and one of the things that really concerned me was, well, some of the, the tugging and the noises that you'd hear in the back. I mean, how smooth can you get this type of system to work with a trailer going down the road? Well, they, they're definitely getting better. Um, you can get air ride systems put onto your, your, your pin box or your trailer or you can get an air ride h uh, hitch as well. And the tolerances have been min minimalized significantly in the hitches over the last few years so you don't get the jarring and chucking when going down the great Manitoba roads like we do have here. Well, we definitely have some bumpy ones, and I'm looking at the one that you've got in the back of this Ford, and I've noticed that even with the system set up so that it has the crossbars, it's still allowing at a later date for this truck to actually be used as a truck. Oh, absolutely. You pull a couple of pins, you can take the head assembly off, and then four more pins, and the hitch comes directly out of the bed, and you have two rails sitting in the bed of your truck, they don't really impede for much at all. You can still use your truck for everyday use. Now, a system like what we're looking at here, because people need to be aware that there's quite a difference in respect to costs. So for what we're looking at for this particular Reese unit, what would be the approximate cost when we think about the hitch itself as well as proper installation? Well, they, it, they range, but this particular model is in around the $1,400 mark. Um, it's got the slider, it's a lifetime warranty, it's, it's one of the higher end hitches. Now, price-wise, it, it can range anywhere from $700 to about $4,000 for a fifth wheel hitch. But this is the best bang for your buck by far. Now, I've seen some of the new high-end products that exist that actually make it look as though a fifth wheel was never put into the back of the truck. How does that work? Yeah, that one's called the uh, Reese Elite Series Hitch, where all the mounting hardware is actually underneath the bed of the truck. And you have, they call it a puck system. There's four hockey-sized puck holes drilled into the bed of the truck, and the hitch drops into those, those holes you've dr drilled. You swing four tabs, locks into place, and when you want to remove it, you swing the four tabs, lift the hitch right out, and they give you rubber plugs for the holes, and it's like there's no hitch in the box at all. It's a totally clean bed, beautiful design. It's, it's a really nice hitch. So that makes it definitely very usable for any other application that you'd need a truck for. But the other thing I was curious about is some of the challenges you've been seeing in respect to the new garageable box sizes, like 5 foot 8. Well, that, that's the thing. Y years ago, everyone had an 8 foot bed truck that wanted to pull a fifth wheel. But they weren't the greatest for driving in and around the city and around town. So people started to go with the more, uh, to the shorter bed, to the 6 and a half. And now we're even finding the 5 8 boxes is a very popular tower. So there are some options available with the 5.8 box, but you have to be very careful because you might have to get a pin extension put onto your trailer or have an auto slide fifth wheel hitch put into the bed of the truck. But the options are available now, which is a nice feature. Now we see the big numbers that come from the manufacturers in respect to what their trucks can do. But the one thing that we've also noticed is how robust a lot of the half tons have become. Are you seeing more applications where a fifth wheel makes sense for a half ton application? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the trailers themselves are getting lighter and lighter, and they're increasing the tow ratings on the, on the trucks themselves, on the half tons. So w with that, then we definitely are seeing a major increase in people wanting to tow fifth wheels with the half tons. And that's where we get into the 5.8 box as well, because people like the cab space, having the crew cab, the full four doors, and then they end up with the 5.8 box. So it gets a little more expensive because you have to get the higher end hitches and sometimes, you know, modify the trailer a bit. But, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a growing trend here in, in Manitoba anyway.
Now, Jack, a lot of the new trucks, such as the Super Duty, have the integrated brake controllers. But for a lot of vehicles, that's simply not an option, especially with the new wiring harnesses. Now, have things adapted to these new types of technologies? Is there a solution that's easy to plug into just about anything? Oh, absolutely. It's the, the Prodigy RF is the latest and greatest in the braking technology. It's a trailer-mounted brake control. And then you just have a handheld unit that plugs into your power source in the vehicle, into the lighter, and you can move it from vehicle to vehicle. So it works really well for the customer that has one trailer but multiple tow vehicles. It also works really well on a lot of new, new vehicles with the knee airbags. You can't just mount a brake controller under the dash. You can't mount it into the airbag. So this is a good solution for that. So you're able to dial in the different varying degrees of gain that you need to make sure that you tailor just the way you need for your braking needs? Absolutely. This is the top line braking system. It's digital. You can monitor your braking power, your output has a boost feature to it. So if you're towing through the mountains or you get into a situation where you will want a little more aggressive braking, it's a push of a button and there you have it. Are a lot of people considering a braking solution for a uh, trailer size that maybe up until now they didn't think they needed to have a, a trailer braking system? Well, there, there's a lot of people out there that are actually unaware of the laws, so it's important to find out the laws before you, you tow and you hit the road. Uh, in Manitoba, anything over 2,000 pounds has to have some sort of braking system on it, whether it's electric brakes or hydraulic brakes. That being said, if you're going through the states, or even across Canada, there's different provinces have different laws. So you need to know where you're going and what you're towing and, and have the appropriate setup. Now, Jack, when we go on press events around North America to take a look at the new vehicles, especially trucks, we notice that there's actually been quite a few changes in regards to the wiring architecture on these vehicles. And it's completely different from the days of splicing into an old school harness. Well, absolutely. Um, you don't want to do that these days. A lot of vehicles, it'll avoid the warranty, and it can also cause problems with their com computer systems. Uh, for a fifth wheel hitch, as, as this one, they make T-connectors that just tee in at the back, and you have no issues. When you get into the higher-end vehicles, they have become even more complicated. You get what's called a multiplexed wiring system. So they run really thin wires to the back and send several signals down the same one single wire. So they've, what they've come out with now is a zero contact taillight converter. So there's actually no splicing into the wire at all. It just clips over the wire and it senses the pulse going through the wire and gives the proper readout at the other end. So any vehicle on the market today, it is possible to wire them now, which is a big difference. And of course the good news is, is there's no concern for avoiding that warranty. Exactly. That's, that's a big concern to a lot of customers these days. But since you're not spli splicing into the wiring, you can remove it and no one will know it was ever even there and you can move it on to your next vehicle too. Well, Jack, it's all great information for telling people what they need to know about their towing requirements and their needs. Now, if people want to find out more about what type of fifth wheel system is going to work best for their applications, how do we find you on the web? Uh, you can reach us at bellstrailerhitches.com or feel free to give us a call anytime and we'll help you with all of your towing needs. Well, fantastic. Jack Bell, I want to thank you once again for hitching a ride on the road trip. Thanks for having me, Michael. Well, classic car season is fast approaching, and there's a couple things we wanted to mention to you on the road trip. Most importantly, have you stored your classic vehicle properly? And that has to do with some basics, such as putting fuel stabilizer in, and also ensuring that you make some very big checks on the vehicle. Because, of course, when a vehicle sits, that's when seals can dry out. So you want to make sure that none of the key components, such as your braking system is suffering any fluid loss and you want to check out some of the other problematic areas now being a British vehicle there is the old joke of if there isn't any oil underneath start to worry because it's all leaked out but on this restored MGA shouldn't have too much of a problem but make sure that you do fluid changes on any vehicle that's been sitting for a prolonged period it's just good maintenance now this particular vehicle is one that we hope to feature more of on the road trip this year. And we love every type of vehicle. 
from North American to British, even the old school trucks are definitely something that's a favorite for us. So if you want to have your vehicle featured on the road trip, send an email to honkyourhorn at live.ca. We'd love to have it here at the Blue Ocean Studio. Might even give it a free bath while it's here. Now this particular Super Duty does have the FX4 suspension and I want to explain exactly what that gets you. Now it's a $450 option on the F250 Super Duty that we have here and it does have the Rancho shocks as well as the skid plates and hill descent control. These are important things to have. Now as you can see we don't have a hoist here at the Blue Ocean Studio but what we do have is the work of Brian Park. He's our robotics expert for the road trip. And it looks as though he's put together a new rig for us that involves a camera that was bought, I guess you could say, with a certain amount of air miles and has the abilities to go underneath the vehicle and give us the views that we're looking for. Now, we hope that this particular system is going to work and not go ricocheting off of the concrete. And if somebody could possibly let me know when they're actually going to be driving it through my legs, I would probably appreciate that. But it's just some of the things that we need to do here at the road trip to let you know how low our budget really is. Now, I've had concerns with Ford over the last few years, and I wanted to tell you that I've had some very serious discussions with Ford of Canada people, and it has to do with how well they're sealing the bottoms of the doors in respect to seam sealer. It's actually been something where we've seen premature corrosion. This particular truck is brand new, so we haven't seen the issue yet. But it has to do with the fact that there just simply isn't any sealing here. When the water or any brine gets into that, it's going to start to corrode rather quick. So make sure that you get the proper preventative measures, such as rust check, rust block, or the like. Now the one thing I do like about the back seat on this particular F-250 is the compartments that exist underneath both sides of the split seat. And the fact that these compartments can actually be locked with the key is a definite plus, considering the fact that a lot of these vehicles are used as an office on the job site all day long. Now as we mentioned with trucks like the F-250 Super Duty it's really more about being a mobile office, a mobile workspace and that means that the truck has to be designed inside to accept these types of needs. Now the one thing that you'll notice in comparison to the Super Duties of old is the revision to the sync system. In fact, the entire switch gear has been made in such a way that it can be manipulated while wearing gloves, while being on the job site. And the other thing that you'll notice is that the screen that is used for the sync is very familiar with the ones that are used on other Ford products. So if you've got a Ford family and you're driving a Focus Fusion or an Edge, you've got essentially the same screen setup. So very much what you expect on a Ford product. But I have to admit, I do like the layout that they've done here with this type of switch gear. And it's not necessarily about whether or not you've got leather gloves on. It makes it easy to actuate and also to be doing so without having to leave line of sight while you're going down the road. Now what I also like here is where they place the integrated controller for the brake system for the fifth wheel or any other trailer that has brakes. You have a system here that instead of 
putting it to the left of the driver is easy to actuate and simply adjusting the gain is all controlled very easily from up front. Now the one thing that's also needing to be noted here is the power outlets because as we mentioned there's going to be a lot of applications where you may need to plug in something to do your estimates like a laptop or a netbook or a pad and you've got plug-ins at the front of the vehicle for AC as well as the rear of the console. Now take a look at this console. This is actually one of the flattest that we've seen. It's actually a very usable work surface and it's also key lockable. Very deep, has all the room that you'd possibly ever need for any of the office supplies, estimating, all of that sort of stuff. Now the steering wheel itself, it's looking a little bit dated in respect to the controls and I'm hoping that they're going to move to something like the five-way controls on other Ford products. But the cluster is very familiar, much like what we've seen on the F-150. As for the rest of the interior, it's definitely starting to look a little bit dated in respect to the fit and finish and trim. We're expecting at this level more soft finish, especially when what we've seen from the Ram set in respect to their interiors. And with everything we've been seeing from the Ford Camp, we know that some of these changes are going to be coming soon. Now a lot of other trucks in the segment have gone to some form of top dash type of tray with a rubber non-skid type of surface and for the most part they work but you're still dealing with the glare and reflections that can occur with having these items on the top of the truck and what I like about this one is that it is integrated in such a way that if you're not paying attention you may not even know that there's a compartment here which is pretty handy for keeping away the pry bar eyes. Now this button here flips it up and what you've got is good depth as well as a non-skid pad that can be removed and especially if there's a cleaning concern but this is also where you're going to find your inputs in respect to USB SD card as well as a separate 12 volt accessory jack so you can even have charging going on in this compartment so I think enough manufacturers are starting to realize that any way that they can carve out a little bit of extra space for storage and productivity makes a lot of sense especially when it's your mobile office and the only thing that concerns me about any engine in the bay of a Ford Super Duty is how you get it out and I've actually been in the shops where you've had to lift the cab off now hopefully that's not going to be something you're gonna have to worry about for a few years but as you can see the way that the engine is set back in the bay means that any sort of access to the rear is going to be a bit of a problem and probably lose a pint of blood trying to get anything out of there now you're probably wondering what all these flex fuel labels mean on the back of quite an abundance of vehicles and it has to do with the fuel that these types of engines can run. Now what that actually is is E85. Now E85 is a fuel that is actually derived of 85 percent ethanol blend. So it's interesting to note that it's a fuel that's light on the gasoline and high on the corn because that's where a lot of the ethanol is derived from. Now I've got a little bit of history in respect to actually using E85 and I did this back in 2007 on an E85 capable Chevy Impala. Here's what I learned. You're actually going to find that you use more of the E85 fuel when you're driving the vehicle and that doesn't really tend to change whether it's city or highway. In fact to use it I actually had to take a road trip down to Iowa. That was the only place where E85 was in abundance for the consumer. Now it's been used for fleet in Canada and in fact some of the provincial vehicles have been using it. The biggest problem with it is is where it needs to get that 85 percent from. There's actually been concerns especially in the US where farmers have actually been receiving more money to make a crop that was for fuel purposes than to make a crop that was needed for food. So gotta ask yourself how hungry do you want to be when it comes to what's going in your tank? 
Now, as three-quarter ton trucks go, this particular Super Duty is definitely not inexpensive. In fact, the one that we're looking at today with the 6.2 liter gas is priced at just under $64,000. Now, the question for a lot of people who are looking at trucks like this is, how much am I actually going to work it? Which is probably why a lot of people tend to go to the diesel solution. But the big question is, are you ever going to have to use the truck to those capabilities? It's nice to say that you've got 800 foot-pounds of torque, but if you're only ever going to need the applications that make sense with the 6.2, then it makes sense to take a look at something like this. Because there is going to be some distinct advantages going gas over diesel. And as we mentioned, diesel is the type of vehicle that craves to be driven. It's not something that likes to sit. So if you're only going to be using this type of vehicle as a seasonal requirement, then the gas might be exactly what you're looking for. But most importantly, when you're looking at any form of trailer, any form of hauling situation, make sure that you talk to the experts when it comes to the trailer, as well as those at the dealership. Make sure that they know exactly what your truck can handle, because you don't want to find out in the worst possible scenario when you need to have that extra grunt. Now, if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about anything automotive or truck, send us an email at honkyourhorn at live.ca. And listen to the road trip every Saturday on CJOB for the latest from the world of car. I'm Michael Clark. Keep the shiny side up and the rubber side down. Yep, that's about right for anything British.